Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Healing for the Incurable. We're taking a stand, a biblical stand, we believe, that healing is part of the atonement that Jesus won at Calvary. That healing is for everybody in every situation. That healing triumphs over any sickness, injury, diagnosis. We get together once a month on every first Saturday to specifically address that topic. This is kind of a new song for us around here. but it talks about some of the tools that we use to appropriate this victory that we have. Tools like praise, and thanksgiving, tools like prayer and communion. So let's just enter his gates with thanksgiving. Let's enter his courts with praise this morning. While we're there, let's just pick up on the healing power and anointing of Jesus Christ himself. Amen? There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood you shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. There's a table that you prepared for me in the presence of my enemies. It's your body and your blood shed for me. This is how I fight my battles. I believe you've overcome. I will lift my song of praise for what you've done. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight with me surely your goodness and your mercy follow me my weapons are praise and thanksgiving this is how I fight my battles I believe you've overcome I will lift my song of praise what you've done. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you it may look like I'm surrounded but I'm surrounded by you this is how I fight my This is how I fight my battles. Yeah. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. 
surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how. It may look like I'm surrounded. Surrounded by you, it may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, I'm surrounded by you. It may look like I'm surrounded, but I'm surrounded by you. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. This is how There's a table that you've prepared for me In the presence of my enemies It's your body and your blood you shed for me This is how I fight my battles How I fight my battles. This is how I fight my battles. Oh, that's how. Hallelujah. Oh, you may be seated in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want to welcome you to Healing for the Incurable this morning. Um, if you have been diagnosed as being incurable, I have come to disagree. Amen. If you've been diagnosed as uh, being terminal, I come to disagree. If you've been diagnosed as anything except healed by this blood of Jesus and the stripes that he carried, I come to disagree. Hallelujah. Praise you, Jesus. We've been doing a lot of talking and a lot of thinking and a lot of meditating and a lot of praying and a lot of releasing about, prayer, about healing um, in, in oh, this last year or more. Um, Part of it is because our son-in-law in Germany, we're standing for healing for him from fourth stage brain cancer. He had a surgery right out a year ago uh, where they removed three tumors, and um, he's still recovering from that surgery, but he's here. They gave him up then. They gave him up a few months later. They gave him up in October. They gave him up in December before he came over here and spent uh, uh, the, the holidays with us. And uh, um, you know what? He just continues to, to stupefy. So uh, I don't mind stupefying, but I'm going for the whole enchilada. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We are expecting his complete and total healing. But you know, when something that close to you happens, your mind and your heart is on healing all the more. And so um, um, it's, not like, um, it's not like we've come around pontificating at these meetings here. Um, we're right down and dirty with everybody else. We're believing for healing in what would otherwise medically be an impossible situation. So I just want you to know that, uh, that, that what we're seeing and what we've seen is just part of what we expect to see for this whole, whole, whole region here. We expect, you know, they talk politically about cities of refuge. I believe in Albuquerque being a city of refuge, but a city of refuge from sickness, 
a city of refuge from illness, a city of refuge from physical destruction. I believe that this is a city that people will come to all around the country, all around the world. They'll come here so that Jesus will heal them. Healing will be that prevalent here. And I want to be part of that. You know, that, that used to happen in the 20s and 30s. Albuquerque was a mecca for healing, um, uh, for tuberculosis and, and some of these things where Albuquerque's climate was really ideal for things. People would get on trains and planes and buses and cars. They'd come to Albuquerque. Um, <clears throat> if, you look at, um, if you look at the old Presbyterian hospital, if you, if you look on the west face of the old Presbyterian Hospital. There's a little frontage road and there's I-25 that runs by it. But uh, if you look at the old face of the west side of Presbyterian Hospital, there's a, 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 an entrance there and above it a real pretty stone frieze that says Maytag. The Maytag Corporation built a, a hospital here in Albuquerque to send any and all of its employees from around the country to, to rehabilitate for tuberculosis. And just across the street from that, uh, at, the, at the hotel that's right there on I-25 and Central, that used to be the, the uh, uh, Santa Fe Railroad's hospital to do the same. They sent um, employees from all around the country to rehabilitate there. So that same reputation that was about Albuquerque in those days, I believe is going to be spiritually prevalent in the days to come. Amen? I want to share just a little concept with you from, uh, from the Lord's Prayer this morning. Um, and then Claudia is going to come and share some things with you as well. We just want to build up faith and uh, release faith a little bit later for healing for, for anybody who's got any sort of sickness and disease. But I want, to, I want to kind of go over a concept that I've been meditating on that comes from the Lord's Prayer. We all know that we're spiritual beings, isn't that right? We're primarily spirits. We're spirit beings, we're housed in a body, and in this body we have an, a brain which contains an intellect, and there's some, there's some spillover between our spirits and our brains, our spirits and our hearts, our spirits and our body. We're interconnected, but primarily we are a three-part being, body, soul, and spirit. Primarily spirit, because spirit is what lives over on into eternity. We are eternal beings. We were created in the image of God, okay? We are eternal beings. Now, that, do, that doesn't necessarily mean that we, that we predate all of history like God does. We're created beings, but our future is eternal, okay? Our future is eternal. And, and so, so as spirits, we circulate in eternity. Now, eternity, by definition, means past, present, and future all accessible at the same time. Okay, if you're an eternal being, you, you, you're, the, there's really no such thing as time. You have access to the past, you have access to the present, you have access to the future. You're, you're eternal. You're just flowing in that, in that ocean of eternity where there is not a linear timeline. But in the physical, we do. We, 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 we do live in a linear timeline. One minute, the next minute, the next minute, on to the next day, on to the next month. We live in a linear timeline. And it seems like, as spiritual beings, some of our some of our wondering, some of our confusion here on this earth, as, as the Bible writer said, he says, I'm... I'm uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trapped, I'm confused, I'm, 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 I'm contained by the notion of uh, oppose, two opposing things, what I know to be true and what I see to be true. What I know to be true and what I see to be true. Sometimes they seem to be two different things. And I think in the area of sickness, that's, that's one thing that we battle because when, we, when our bodies are sick or afflicted and everything, we feel the pain. We feel physical pain. We, uh, we, we, we're, we're cognizant of things going on that shouldn't be going on. And yet we believe with all of our hearts that by Jesus stripes we're healed and made whole. So the, 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 real, the, the, the real battle here is to take what's in the eternities, this healing, this provision, this, 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 this idea that, that by Jesus' stripes we're healed, that's in the eternities, to bring it down into this timeline, into the here and now. And frankly, 
I want to show you something about the Lord's Prayer. The Lord's Prayer was designed to help us to do just exactly that, to take what's in the eternities that's already ours as spirit beings and bring it down into the timeline, the here and now that we live. Check this out. See if this isn't true. I'm, I'm going to read the, the Lord's Prayer from Matthew chapter 6. It starts in, uh, starts in verse 9. There's two accounts. There's another account of the Lord's Prayer uh, in Luke 11. But scholars think that those were done at two different times, and I do too. I don't know really which one's first, but uh, in, in Matthew chapter 6, um, this, this, this prayer is part of a very long preaching. So it's a long sermon that Jesus does, sharing on a lot of really great things. If you want to hear Jesus preach, read in Matthew chapter 6. In Luke chapter 11, it's another occasion where the, where the disciples are kind of saying, hey, um, you know, John's disciples taught us how to pray. And I think maybe you mentioned this some other time maybe, but uh, teach us how to pray. And so uh, Jesus repeats this very same prayer with just a couple of words of difference uh, in, in Luke 11. But I'm going to take the, the, the Matthew chapter 6 version. And I'm going to say this. Pray therefore like this in, chapter, in verse 9. Matthew 6, verse 9. Pray therefore like this. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed, kept holy be your name. In other words, just like the song we sang, we start out by preaching. This is how we fight our battles. We, 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 we start out by, by praising his name. We start out by, by giving God the glory and acknowledging God for who he is. Verse 10. Your kingdom come, or if you're a, 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 if you're a King James fan, it's thy kingdom come. I want to I express this sentence like this. Your kingdom, colon, come. I want to say it like this. Your kingdom, come. Your kingdom, in the eternities, in the spirit, where there is provision for healing, where there's provision for, for restoration, where there's provision for the absolute restoration and wholeness of our body in the, in the heavenlies, in the spirit realm, in the eternal realm where we're created to be, come right here, right now, into this situation, into our timeline, into the here and now of our existence. Do you see how that's almost like a quantum physics principle? Thy kingdom, where everything is, every blessing, every spirit-led blessing, every spirit-given blessing, thy kingdom come. That's what we're doing today. We're taking the concept that Jesus heals, and we're bringing it into the right here and the right now. Okay? Thy kingdom, colon, come. Thy will, and we know that his will regarding healing is that above all things, we would, we, would, we would be prospered and be in health just as our soul prospers. That's from, first, or from 3 John verse 2. We know his will concerning healing. Thy will, this spiritual concept that's in the eternities where our spirits are, are living, thy will be done right here, right now, at this point in our linear timeline. Jesus taught us to pray this way so that these promises and everything wouldn't be just some far off concept to us, but he taught us to pray to bring these spiritual concepts into the here and now. And we do it by faith. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven, in the eternities. Give us when? This day, right here, right now, in this point in our timeline. Give us this day our daily bread. Now, that doesn't just mean bread. That means everything that we need for physical substance. And I would include healing as part of that. When you're sick, your body needs to be healed. It cries out for it. It looks for it. Its DNA structure is ba already battling the disease in the natural best it can. Your white counts up, battling bad things in your body. You know, it's already happening, but 
give us this day. We've already got it in the spirit. We've already been promised it as eternal spiritual beings. But give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts. I'm reading from the Amplified. As we also have forgiven, left, remitted, and let go of the debts, have given up resentment against our debtors. Forgiveness is always an important concept for, for healing, and uh, I'll tell you what I think is the main reason why. I think that condemnation is one of the very things that actually pins us into disease and sickness. Because we, when we think about sin, when we think about shortcomings, when we think about the, the, the things that we've done, whether it be conceptual or, or, or even you know, things in the physical that we've done to create or cause per, perhaps something in the natural, we're condemned over it. And, and forgiveness releases us from condemnation. We're, forgiveness, when we forgive and we know that we're forgiven, we know that we're right with God and that by his grace and by his goodness, we're qualified to, to inherit the promises. If we're condemned by our, our, our sins and everything, we, we can easily justify, well, that's what I deserve. I guess I deserve this. No, you don't deserve it because Jesus went to the cross so that we might be forgiven of all sins. And we need to know it. And we need to, we need to practice it so that we do know it. We need to release people in forgiveness so that we know that we are released in forgiveness. And so we don't complicate our thinking, our carnal thinking, by thinking about debts that we owe that we could never pay. You can never pay for your sin. You could never make remission for your own sin. That's why Jesus came and died and rose again. So we receive and we release forgiveness so that our brains will think straight in this realm of condemnation, this realm of guilt, this realm of receiving the healing that is ours as a spiritual concept in the here and now. Remember, he's teaching us to bring the things of the Spirit into the here and now. That's what the Lord Prayer does. It teaches us to bring things into the now. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So that's what we're going to do today. We're going to, we're going to pray the, the spirit blessings of eternal beings, the spirit blessings that God has already given us as spirit. I'm doing this because that figure eight is the symbol for infinity. It's the symbol for eternity. It, it, there again, it's past, present, future, all at the same time. All these blessings that he has secured for us in the spirit, we're to bring them into the now. Thy kingdom... Come, thy will be done. And that's what we're here to see this morning. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Claudia? You're going to be handed out some papers. You know, this isn't a teaching time, but I want to get some things on the inside of us as we go forth in healing and receiving healing and giving out healing. It's an amazing thing because in this type of meeting, what God does is he allows it to pour through us and pour upon us. And so what I want to talk to you about real quickly is healing, not to give up when you're not seeing things instantaneous. There were instantaneous healings, and there were, and they began to get better healings. And sometimes we just get worn out. We think, well, what did I do wrong? Well, what's in my life? Well, what's going on? And so we have a tendency to let go of some things. But we never, ever, ever let go, and we let God absolutely show us everything we need to see, and we walk in total healing. And 
forgiveness of sin. Uh, and so I want us to look at an example real quickly that you've seen before. It's the woman that had the issue of blood. But I want you to see the lengths of time that happened in this. So in Mark chapter 5 and verse 25, it says, There was a woman who had a flow of blood for how long? 12 years. How long was this woman sick? 12 years. I mean, after the second year, I'd say, ah, pff, it's never going to work. Okay? But she kept going for it. And who had endured much suffering under the hands of many physicians, spent all she had, and was no better, but instead <laughs> grew worse. She had heard reports concerning Jesus. Now, at this point, she spent everything. She spent 12 years of her life in suffering with this issue. There's no hope. But guess what? We're prisoners of hope. So as soon as she started hearing a report about Jesus, what? It began to come again. And she came, it says she heard reports concerning Jesus. She came up behind him in the throng and touched his garment, for she kept saying, if I only touch his garment, I shall be restored to health. Now I want to stop there. Do you think every time she went to the doctor, she thought, if only I could find this doctor, I'll bet it'll work. She always had this hope, and it never worked. But this time, she says, and, and if, I, if I touch his garment, I'll be restored to health, verse 29. And immediately, her flow of blood was dried up at the source, and suddenly she felt in her body that she was healed from her distressing ailment. What if she had given up in the 11th year? But she didn't. It's just like Daniel. He kept praying, and he fasted for 21 days. If he had stopped on the 20th day when he was waiting for God's answer, it wouldn't have worked. But he determined set his face to God and said, I'm going to do this till I receive. And this woman, I'm going to find some way till I receive. And so then we see a situation like this uh, where a man had been sick for a long time. Let's see how long. John 5 and verse 1. Jesus returned to Jerusalem to observe one of the Jewish holidays. Inside the city near the Sheep Gate, there is a pool called in Aramaic, the House of Loving Kindness. And this pool is surrounded by five covered porches. And I want to stop there. This is where they used to bring the sacrificial lambs so that they could get water. And now this is a place that people would also gather. And it says this in verse 3. Hundreds of sick people were lying there on the porches. The paralyzed, the blind, the crippled, all of them waiting for their healing. Hundreds of people. Okay? So now verse 4. The angel of the Lord will periodically descend into the pool. Stir up the waters. The first one who stepped into the pool after the water swirled would instantly be healed. I mean, what a thing. We think we see the miraculous now, and we think we hear about different things. This was an actual place that hundreds of people came hoping, maybe it'll be me. Maybe it'll be me. And the angel would do this from time to time. But now look at this, verse 5. Now, there was a man who had been disabled for, how long? 38 years lying among the multitude of the sick. Now, how discouraged do you think this man is? 38 years? Now, you're going to try to think, well, maybe, maybe it's going to take me that long. No, it's not. But I'm telling you, no matter what it's taken, it's not too late. Okay? It says in verse 6, it says, When Jesus saw him lying there, he knew the man had been crippled for a long time. Jesus said to him, Do you truly long to be healed? And the sick man said, Sir, there's no way I can get healed. For I have no one who will lure me into the water when the angel comes. And as soon as I try to crawl to the edge of the pool, someone jumps ahead of me. And Jesus said to him, stand up, pick up your sleeping mat, and you will walk. Now, I want to point out something here that's pretty awesome with God. This man didn't say, when he said, do you want to be healed? He didn't say, yeah, but I don't think it'll happen. He said, I don't have anyone to put me in. Because his faith was if only somebody would care enough about me, to put me in the pool, I'd be healed. And Jesus met him where his faith was. Here comes somebody. It's Jesus. And so Jesus came, and it says, and uh, Jesus said to him, stand up and walk. Verse 8, pick up your sleeping mat, and you will walk. And immediately he stood and was healed, rolled up his mat, and walked again. And this miracle took place on the Jewish Sabbath. You know, most of Jesus' miracles took place on the Sabbath because it would irritate all the religious Okay, and the Jewish leader saw the man walking and carrying a sleeping mat and objected, why are you doing and carrying that? Don't you know it's a Sabbath? It's not lawful for you to carry things on the Sabbath. And he answered, the man who healed me told me to pick up my mat and walk. What man, they asked, 
who is this man who ordered you to do something on the Sabbath? But he, 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 uh, the healed man couldn't give him an answer, for he did not yet know, since Jesus had already slipped away into the crowd. A short time later, this is very important, Jesus found the man at the temple and said to him, Look at you now. You're healed. Walk away from your sins so that nothing worse will happen to you. Now, I want to tell you something. Jesus' concentration wasn't on what this man did or didn't do. His concentration was on the man. And when the man went, look at you, you're totally healed. Now, you don't ever have to sin anymore. Now, how much sin could this invalid do in 38 years that he was there? I mean, you know. And so I want to give you the definition of sin. Sin properly is to miss the mark, not to share in the prize, to err, faults, trespass, sin in thought, feeling, speech, or action. And so this man was not sharing in the prize. He was not going for the healing, knowing God. He was not believing that God was going to help him get in that well. He wasn't believing any of that. He was sinning. He was not entering into the prize. He was missing the mark. And so Jesus said, look at you, you're healed. Don't miss the mark anymore. Don't let a worse thing happen to you. Jesus being the mark. Now, I want you to see this in a couple of different, a couple of different not translations, but different perspectives. Here we had from John, that we're going to see Matthew and Mark very quickly. In Matthew, Jesus got in the boat, returned to consider, and where he considered his homeland, Capernaum. And when people brought a paralytic man to him, lying on a sleeping mat, this is this situation, when Jesus perceived strong faith was in their heart, he said to the paralytic man, my son, be encouraged, your sins have been forgiven. So here we are in a meeting. They can't get to him. They lower this man down. Jesus saw their faith. And he said to the man, your sins be forgiven. Let me ask you a question. Did this man, who was a paralytic, on a mat that they lowered down, similar to the guy who was at the well, on the mat that they lowered down, did this man ask Jesus to forgive him? Then Jesus had no right to forgive him. He wasn't asking for forgiveness. Jesus walked up to a woman who had been suffering for, 30, for 18 years, bent over. She didn't ask Jesus to heal her. And guess what he did? He healed her. The woman with her son that was in the coffin didn't ask Jesus to raise him from the dead, and Jesus rose him from the dead. A woman came to Jesus and poured out everything she had on Jesus, and Jesus said, your sins are forgiven you. She didn't ask. Because we've gotten a false doctrine that says, this person's not being healed because they haven't asked God to forgive them. Jesus didn't say, you tell them to come up and make sure that I've forgiven them. He said, you forgive them. Okay, so here we go. He says, uh, in verse 2, the people brought the paralytic man, lying on a sleeping man. When Jesus perceived their strong faith in their hearts, he said to the paralyzed man, my son, be encouraged, your sins have been forgiven. Now, these guys were mad over here when the guy got healed at the pool saying it was done on the Sabbath. They didn't rejoice about the miracle, but they wanted to go with the law. Verse 3, these words prompted some of the religious scholars who were present to think, why, this is nothing but blasphemy. Jesus supernaturally perceived their thoughts and said to them, why do you carry such evil in your hearts? What's easier to say, your sins are forgiven or stand up and walk. But now to convince you the Son of Man has been given authority to forgive sins, I say to this man, stand up, pick up your mat, and walk home. Same difference. Jesus, let me ask you a question. Did Jesus tell us to lay hands on the sick and they should recover? Did Jesus tell us to go forth and to heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the blood? Yes. And Jesus is saying, understand, when I give you authority to heal, to heal the body, I give you authority to forgive sin. What's the difference? They said, you have no authority to forgive sin. He said, then rise up and walk. What's the difference? When you and I lay hands on people, it is telling them that they are released from sin and its consequences, whether sin that happened in their lives or the sin in the world, that they're released from that and they're set free. Sickness would not have hold in this world if sin had never come in. And we are here to show righteousness, not by actions, to bring forth the righteousness of God so that there will be absolute healing, okay? And then the crowd rejoiced because such authority had been given to human beings. In Mark, it says the same story, Mark 2 and verse 4, 
They could not get a place in front of Jesus because of the throng. They dug through the roof above him that they had scooped out an opening, and they let down the thick padded quilt or mat which the paralyzed man lay. And when Jesus saw their faith, their confidence in God through him, he said to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven you and put away. The penalty is remitted. The sense of guilt is removed. You're made up right and in right standing with God. Okay, and they go on. The same thing happened where they say, you know, you can't forgive sin. And Jesus said, yeah, I did. Yeah, I can. And the man was absolutely healed and made whole. Same thing on your page three in John chapter eight and verse four. This woman, they brought to Jesus and they said, look, she's caught in the very act of adultery. Now Moses and the law commanded us that such woman offenders should be stoned to death. What do you say to do with her? What is your sentence? They tried to test him, hoping they might find some charge which to accuse him. But Jesus scooped down, wrote on the ground with his finger. However, when they persisted with their questions, he raised himself up and said, Let him who is without sin among you first throw the first stone at her. Bent down, went on right on the ground with his finger. They listened to him. They began going out, conscience stricken one by one, from the oldest down to the last one, till Jesus was left alone with the woman standing there before him in the center of the court. When Jesus raised himself up, he said to her, Woman, where your accuser says, no man condemned you. She answered, no one, Lord. And he, Jesus said, I do not condemn you either. Go your way from now on, sin no more. This woman had a sickness. Her sickness was that she always would go in the wrong way. People's sickness might be addiction in some way. People's sickness might be abuse in some way. But it's a sickness. And Jesus, by absolutely love and no condemnation, gave her the ability to sin no more. There is no way this woman ever, I, I, just imagine, she's falling into these areas all the time. I know it came to her mind at some point, uh, maybe I shouldn't do this. But she didn't have the power and authority because she felt so bad about herself. But Jesus came to accept and love and gave her the power to sin no more. He gave the man the power that was at the well, he gave the man the power that was at the pool to sin no more. He gave the man that was lowered down, he gave him the ability and the power to sin no more. And that's what he's given to you and I. In John 3, 17, God did not send his world in, God did not send his son into the world in order to judge, reject, condemn, to pass sentence on the world. But the world might find salvation. That word salvation means healing, wholeness, deliverance, and be made safe and sound through him. John 8, 15, you set yourself up against, uh, uh, as judge according to the flesh by what you see. You condemn by external human standards. Jesus said, I do not set myself up to judge or condemn or sentence anyone. He came so that the sentence could be upon him. Okay, go down to Psalm 25, verse 18. Behold my affliction and my pain. Forgive all my sins of thinking and doing. Jeremiah 33, 8, and I will cleanse them from their guilt and inequity by which they have sinned against me. I will forgive their guilt and inequities by which they have sinned and rebelled against me. 1 John 5, 18, we are convinced that everyone fathered by God does not make sinning a way of life because the son of God protects his, the child of God and the evil one cannot touch him. Now, I want you to see these things very clearly. That God says, I've forgiven. I didn't come to judge. I didn't come to condemn. I came to love you. I came to be on your side. John 20 and verse 22, having said this, this is what Jesus did. He breathed on them, received the Holy Spirit. Having received the Holy Spirit and be led and directed by him, if you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. If you retain the sins of anyone, they are retained. Now listen to me. Wyatt read in the prayer that we call the Our Father, that we forgive others who have trespassed against us. That's not what this is talking about here. It is talking about you, the, you have the right by the power of the Holy Spirit to heal the sick. Yes, you have the right by the Holy Spirit, the power in you, to forgive those who need to be released of sin. Not that offended you but that need to be released of sin. You have the right to do that. Now, your religious head is going to go, no, I don't. And you're going to see somebody here do that, and you're going to say, nobody can forgive sin but God. Except God gave you the right. 
When somebody is involved in some sort of sickness, it is a result of sin. Not in their life necessarily, but sin that has come into the world that Jesus has come and overcame. So we have a right to release them from the bondage of any sin. It says that Jesus said, this peace I give you, my peace is what I leave you. And when you enter any, into any house, you release them from sin. That's our right. That's our privilege. Jesus in John 20 and verse 21 in the Passion Bible, it says, Jesus replied, he, he repeated his greeting, peace be to you. And he told them, just as the Father has sent me, I now send you. Then taking a deep breath, he blew on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. I send you to preach the forgiveness of sins and the people's sins will be forgiven. But if you don't proclaim the forgiveness of their sins, they will remain guilty. Now. We're going to do something before we pray for people today. Do you believe you have the right to forgive sins? Yes. Not just those who have offended you, the right. You believe that? You believe this scripture is true? The first sins I want you to forgive is you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I forgive me. Claudia, you are forgiven of every time you miss the mark. You are forgiven of every time you did anything against God, against man. Claudia, you are forgiven right now of not entering into the fullness of God. I forgive you. Now, I want you out loud to say a prayer like this. Say your name first, Claudia. You are forgiven of sin. Say it. I release you of all sin. Anytime you miss the mark, I forgive you. Anytime you didn't enter into the fullness of God, I forgive you. Now, I'm going to ask you a question. How many of you felt any release as you did that? See? Okay. What you felt is what you're going to bring into somebody else. So that they can be released. Otherwise, when time goes on and they haven't received their healing, they'll start thinking, it's something I did wrong. And instead of it taking 38 years, if, if somehow this man had known that was at the pool, that all he had to do is turn away and receive the forgiveness of God, he wouldn't have taken 38 years. The woman wouldn't have taken 18 years. It was bent over. The woman with the issue of blood wouldn't have spent everything that she had. All of them. The woman that was caught in adultery, the woman who was known as an as extremely wicked woman, they would not have had that if they had known that they could be released from their sin. Now, with that in mind, as we pray for people, I want you to take your place. Maybe you've never taken it before. Maybe you used to miss the mark on that. But I want you to take your place and forgive them and forgive every time they miss the mark of not entering into the fullness and action, deed, thought, whatever it is. Forgive them and then release healing to them. Do we got that? I mean, I'm just saying, let's try everything we can. You know, we always think this is how we get healed. We lay hands, we put oil, uh, we make them face the north, whatever it is, whatever patterns we have. When I got up this morning, this to talk about. And so I'm telling you, since 5 o'clock this morning... This is what he put inside me. So let's try this. You know, the Bible says to become experimentally acquainted with God. That means we experiment. Hey, does that, hey, that, that was good. Will that work all the time or do I, oh, no, not all the time. Okay, well, then we'll do it this time. Experimentally acquainted. Do you like it when I praise you this way? Do you like it when I do this? Do you like it when I, experimentally acquainted. So we're going to experiment today. So I'm going to ask this question. How many of you have a sickness in your body that you want to be set free from today? Okay, those of you who have a sickness in your body, levantate, stand up, rise up, and walk up here. If you would, just kind of line up this way and over here this way. And uh, what we're going to do is we know that the power of God is present to heal you. We know this. And we know that you're going to be absolutely set free. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you 
what sickness you're going to be set free from. And that way the rest of us know and we're going to come up and we're going to release them of sin and heal them. Osteoarthritis. Osteoarthritis. Autoimmune disease. Autoimmune disease. Autoimmune. Autoimmune. Irritable bowel. What is it? Irritable bowel. Irritable bowel syndrome, yes. Asthma. Asthma. On my right knee, I had an injury, Claudia. Okay, right knee. My right, my right knee, and um, I have high blood pressure. Wow, two right knees over here. High blood pressure and hearing problem. So we're going to see that. Yes. Fibromyalgia. Fibromyalgia. Uh, osteoarthritis. Okay. Fibromyalgia. IBS. Wow. De degenerative back. Okay. So Overhaul for this man. Yeah. There's a healing Tumors river. and cysts that are enlarging it's on her organs. flowing in this place. Okay. Tumors and cysts enlarging on her organs. And you? An overhaul. An overhaul. Okay. There's now, a river of healing. You guys heard what we're supposed There's to do. There's a river. And there can be more than one person. I don't want you to instruct to these the people, people and tell them you have to do this and you have to do that. You there know, sometimes when healing, blind. we don't see it happen. We're going we're gonna to blame the person. A river of hey, you didn't have enough faith. You have enough faith. We have enough faith. It's a faith of the Son of God. And because of the amount we have here and the amount we have here, you might have to pray. And when I say pray, it's not, oh, God, do this. Pray means to say the same as. We're going to say the same, your kingdom come as heaven is saying. So you guys stand up, find somebody, and heal them. Yeah, just step in. Just step into the river. Just step into that healing flow, the spirit waters that are flowing in this place. Let the river step into you. Let the river begin to flow on in and flow on through. Let that river of healing begin to overtake you. <laughs> They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. It's just that simple. Hallelujah. Glory to God. They shall lay hands on the sick. That's your part. And they shall recover. That's God's part. When you lay your hands on the sick, you're establishing a spiritual channel of power, a spiritual tunnel, if you will, so that healing can flow from your spirit into their body. It's a release of power, dunamis power. Oh, hallelujah. And it's simple. You couldn't make it happen if you try. But you're just releasing it because it already happened. It already happened in the spirit. It happened when Jesus Christ went to Calvary and he bore the punishment on his body of every disease and every sickness. And then he died and rose again spiritually sealing the deal 
making it a forever thing, not just a one-time occurrence. His resurrection from the dead made sure that that sacrifice and that price was paid for all eternity. Any time that it needed to be invoked, it could be invoked by faith. Any time it needed to be utilized, it could be released by the laying on of hands. That's what happened when he did it eternally by raising from the dead. It wasn't just a one-time deal. It wasn't just him. It was for all mankind. Hallelujah. this part we're going to open this up for people who are uh, declaring healing and proxy for other people we'll release it over the internet specifically I don't know if we have any prayer cloths do we Claudia But if you brought a prayer cloth or anything like that, we'll anoint it. We'll send it forth to do its work. Hallelujah. up here first. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Isaac, before we start calling out proxies and everything like that, I want to check on and see if there's any testimonies from this morning. If you had hands laid on you, if you had healing released to you, is there anybody in here that feels a physical, a tangible difference in your body? I mean, you know, if somebody laid hands on you for a new kidney, you might not be able to discern that until you get to the doctor. But uh, is there anybody that feels a difference? Yes, ma'am. Can you come tell us about it? Come on, come on up here. That way, if you use a microphone, the people on the internet will hear you and stuff. They like you. Yes, uh, my knee was hurting. Well, it's been hurting for years. <laughs> and uh, today, well, just a while ago, I just got a relief from my knee, and now I can walk. I have a knee brace right now, but now I can walk and 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 I thank God for his for his healing. That's literally true. We give God the praise and God the glory. Amen. Anybody else have a testimony for this morning? Well, that was a good one. Praise God. All right. Yes, sir. Come on up here. Yeah, what Claudia was saying about releasing our, uh, forgiving ourselves, and when Barbara's praying to me, wow, that was a big release. My family, if you weren't perfect, uh oh, you're <laughs> pounded. So it's a big release for me. Thank you. Amen. That's, you know, that's one time when Jesus healed people, uh, one of his healing uh, miracles. 
He says, so that you will know that I have power to forgive sins. Rise up and walk. In other words, so that you know that he has the ability to do this eternally and forever in the realm of sin, that's one of the reasons that he demonstrated that principle by healing. In other words, like Claudia said, what's the difference? Yes, sir, come on up. I just want to bear my testimony. I know that Jesus is alive today and, and well. And uh, after I got prayed over today, I just felt so light. And I just feel his presence and his love. And it's, uh, it's a joy. Amen. Amen. That's a principle we've always uh, tried to exercise in our meetings for all these years. We've always said, if you can feel God, if you can discern that God is here among us in the room, then you know that he brought along his power, right? He didn't leave it behind. If he's here, he brought his power with him. And you got to know God well enough to know that if he's here and his power is here, his intent and desire is to use that power to bless you. So if you know he's here, you know that you have what you need. You know that you have your miracle because he brought his power along and he brought the intent to use that power to bless us. Amen? That's the kind of guy he is. Yes, ma'am. Um, uh, this morning when I woke up, I, I was have I have I get this asthma, especially it acts up when there's a lot of allergens in the air. And um, this morning I, I had some pain in my chest and I, I knew that that asthma was giving me some problems. And um, I got prayed for now. And um, I can take a deep breath. I don't have any more pain. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a good thing to breathe, huh? Yeah. Praise you, Jesus. Well, I'll tell you what, it's, it's, it's obvious that his power is here. It's obvious that his power is moving among us. Let's try and uh, expand the four walls of this place right now. And let's try and include some people that uh, either may be watching on the internet or maybe that uh, we can touch. You know, uh, the power of God to heal knows no boundaries of distance or time or anything like that. So let's release this by proxy to some other people. Isaac, you were first to do that. You had mentioned your dad. Come up here and uh, and and and, uh, and and mention that. And uh, there. And, and instead of praying for him specifically now, let's just make mention of these people, and then we'll do a prayer together to release healing to all of them. You just mention them right now. All right. I'd like everyone to pray for my dad. And a friend of ours named Connie, they're both having trouble with their kidneys. And, you know, just lift them up. Okay. Some other people, too, that, uh, that need this very same thing. Veronica, you usually bring your list. Come on up. I didn't bring my list today, unfortunately. Uh, eight. Uh, individuals were cured of cancer gone gone in the name of Jesus I have this one that uh, one lady though she's she, Molly who's been diagnosed about five years ago stage four um, she is a miracle she's still I mean they keep she keeps coming back she uh, she goes into remission she comes back to tell her she's on stage four she goes back into remission comes back on stage four but she looks so healthy that the doctors have to keep checking her id because they do not realize how can you be at stage four and look this good and so she's kind of like i don't know why she's waiting for them to say again she's on remission but even for that she's like i really don't care i'm gonna live my life and be beautiful the way god made me isn't that awesome the doctor's here telling her again you have stage four and she's like you know what you can say whatever you want god's report is over all over me this is the result irregardless of what you say i'm going to come back and i'm just i'm just strong period 
and that is settling into her spirit and she's just amazing she looks amazing praise god but I'm, yeah, I'm going to keep to uh, continue, of course, to pray for Molly. My Aunt Carmen, same thing, diagnosed with uh, cancer. Um, and so, again, there's just, I love miracles. And these people are just beautiful. They're just waiting for, let's get that remission port. Right? Amen. Anybody else have anybody you want to lift up? And, and we'll do it by name. Come on up and, and, and mention them and, and uh, what they need. Come on up. My daughter, Tanya, she has a disease, I can't even pronounce the name of it. And what it is is all her muscle tissues are turning hard and it's affecting even her internal organs. And she's been through several operations and um, I just lift her up in prayer and I claim healing for her in Jesus' name. Anybody else? Yes, sir, come on up. Yeah, my aunt Sharon, she's got a, a breast cancer. She's thinking about doing the, I don't know if she's already done it, the uh, uh, double mastectomy. But uh, it's funny, when I, just before I came in here, my phone dialed her, and I didn't even have her in the queue or anything. And I was like, oh, this is weird. And I had to say, I'll call you back, you know. Uh, but I thought that was odd. And uh, my mother, I've been taking care of her, her for 10 years. She's uh, uh Hospice, uh, Alzheimer's. Sir. Anybody else have anybody? Claudine. I come against cancer in my dad, my cousin Gina, uh, my cousin Lee. In Jesus' name, cancer has no right in their bodies. My brother Charlie, oppression and depression has no right in his body either. I come against uh, cancer in Henley's body in infection in uh, Linda's teeth, gums, had to have all of her teeth removed, all the fillings, all infection, leaves her body. Amen. Amen. Yes. Yes, ma'am. I come against a uh, diagnosis of cancer for my husband. I come against that in Jesus' name, and, I, and I'm thanking for all that agreement in Jesus' name. A stage four cancer is under our feet in the name of Jesus. That's right. That's right. Anybody else before we just speak that over everybody? Yeah. You, ma'am, and then you. I'd like to lift up my friend uh, Imogene. She's uh, been diagnosed with a mass in her brain. She's waiting for an appointment with the um, um, doctors in back east, and I come against that. She's a wonderful person and full of life. And him and Bill, uh, her and Bill, are great friends of mine. And so, Lord, I just, I just uh, lift her up, and we'll continue to until this is over. That's right. That's right. Also, my um, my uh, grandson. Uh, I don't know how it was explained, but when his molars came out, he's seven. Um, all molars, of the top and the bottom, uh, four molars uh, came out uh, like rotten. And um, they're going to want to pull all, of, all four of them out. And um, we're just believing that God is going to replace those and that somehow God, because he is the only one who can help us to believe for these things and we're just believing that uh, uh, God is going to give him some new molars uh, so he won't have to go through all of that. Um, I think um, they said something about him possibly having had a fever when he was very when he was born maybe in early stages when he was born and it, that it can happen that way. So uh, I don't believe that. I don't know. It's just not right, and I just don't believe it. I think it's just another attack from Satan, and in the name of Jesus, um, I'm just um, believing that God is going to do a mighty miracle here in Jesus' name. Uh, 
for Marla, I believe that uh, she will be released from multiple myoma. Um, Brian Blunt, who's definitely in a desperate state right now, um, that he, he will come back from pancreatic cancer and this will not take his life. Um, uh, Barbie Sandy, that she will not have to have a fifth kidney transplant. The transplant that she has, I believe that it will remain in her body for the rest of her life. And the words that have been spoken over me today against ADPAD1, I believe it over my family, that this disease will die and there will be no future for that disease anymore. Amen. Amen. Yes, ma'am. I have a short testimony then. For, so last evening, two young men uh, approached me and asked me if I wanted to receive prayer. I, it was obvious I was using a cane and limping. And so they prayed for me. And so I'm not using the cane today. I still have some pain, but I believe God will totally completely heal it in Jesus' name. Um, I'm standing in the gap today. I have many friends in ministry. Uh, the enemy is coming against them, and I'll just list them briefly. But they're also in the healing deliverance ministry, and so I'm believing God total, complete healing for them also. Um, for, for Van, a total, complete healing, body, mind, and spirit in all areas. The Lord knows what his needs are. And um, for Allison, um, total, complete healing in her body, mind, and spirit, specifically in the area of anxiety, depression, and GI issues. Uh, for Jay, for total, complete healing in body, mind, and spirit uh, in all areas. And uh, for my two grandsons, total, complete healing. They've already had amazing, miraculous healing. Uh, one delivered from autism, and the enemy's trying to come against him with information that he hasn't been healed. So I just declare that is a lie from the pit of hell. And any plans that the enemy is trying to deter him from what he's called him to in his destiny. And also um, total complete healing for my younger grandson, Riley, uh, of his body, mind, and spirit. And the enemy is trying to come against him with also that information. So I just call that Nolan Boyd. And um, I'm very appreciative of the word today that Claudia gave, especially about forgiveness of ourselves and teaching others how to receive forgiveness in a different area, a different manner in which we typically have not heard about forgiveness. So I just uh, stand in the gap and ask you in corporate prayer also, and especially on the internet. These are awesome men and women of God for years who have supported me in ministry, and I'm standing in the gap and have been, and I ask you also, so the enemy will not deter them from the, what they've been called to do. In Jesus' name, That's right. amen. That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, let's pray for all those people, shall we? Let's just agree in prayer right now. Every, every name that was mentioned, Father, um, we just lift up to you right now. And uh, we just declare healing over every single one of them in Jesus' name. We declare forgiveness of sins for each and every one of them in Jesus' name. And we declare that they have the ability to go forth and do likewise, to lay hands on the sick, to forgive sins. Father, we just thank you that, that, that disease uh, is cleared from their bodies, that sickness is cleared from their bodies, that, that the ramifications of injuries are, are cleared from their bodies in Jesus' mighty name. We curse cancer in all of its forms and in any of its manifestations in Jesus' mighty name. We release healing right now over the internet. Anybody who's watching, we release healing to you, that same healing that we've been talking about. We release it to you in Jesus' mighty name. We release your, you from sin in Jesus' mighty name. We declare your sins are for forgiven in Jesus' mighty name. We declare that you have the same power to go and do likewise, and that the people that you're lifting up and the people that you are standing in the gap for right now, that they are healed as well in Jesus' mighty name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you for this ability to take your kingdom and spread it 
all through the earth. We thank you for the ability to, 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 to rise up against our enemies in the spirit who would, who would use the, 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 the former rules and the former things of the curse of this world against us. We are the righteousness of God in Christ. We are, we are your property, Lord, and sickness does not, cannot stay in us in Jesus' mighty name. We adjure it, we tell it to go, we command it to leave, and we command it to to, to, to go to the high and dry places where it, they cannot affect anyone in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Uh, just to show you how wonderful and awesome our God is, um, I have a sister who's two years older than myself, and... Um, her kidneys gave out, her liver gave out, her heart gave out. She died five times they had to bring her back. And uh, we continued to pray for her and there were many people who were praying for her and, and believing because we, we could have given up and said, oh well, you know, everything gave out. You know, just send her to the Lord. It's her time, it's her turn. But we didn't, we didn't do that. We, we stood and, and we stood on the word of God that said that she was healed and by his stripes she is healed. And we continued and we continued to pray. And, some, and like two, maybe three weeks went by and she was in a coma. She was just the most horrible things that you can think of. And today, uh, two months later, she's home. She's breathing. She's healthy. She spoke to me on the telephone. She knows who I am. They said, oh, she's going to be brain dead because she, and she knew who I was. She knows she's with her son. She's living. She's breathing. She's eating. She's doing everything. And we do serve a very awesome and wonderful God. And he does hear our prayers. And you've got to believe that he does hear our prayers because he does. He's answered so many of our prayers already. And, and just for years and years, we've been depending on him because sometimes the doctors, they'll give us something, uh, a medication, and it doesn't even work. So we go to God and he, he gives us, a, we go to Dr. Jesus. He gives us the right medication. <laughs> Praise God. You're preaching good now. Hallelujah. Last thing I want to do this morning is um, I, I, I don't, didn't see any prayer claws in the back. Um, I've got some, some tissues here that we can use as makeshift prayer cloths. If you want to take a prayer cloth to anyone, and uh, according to the Bible in the book of Acts, you know, they would take cloths that had been anointed uh, with, the, uh, with, with the healing power of, of the Holy Ghost, and they would take that cloth and physically place it on somebody or near someone, um, that, that that would be another way to release healing. If you want to use that channel, if there's anybody in the hospital that you're visiting or something like that, or if you're visiting somebody at home, um, let's just, let's just uh, stick your hands out and let's just release uh, healing anointing onto these tissues right now. Father, we just thank you that uh, once again, your healing power knows no limitations of delivery. Father, that that your word, in, in, in this case, your word to heal, it goes forth and it, accomplished that, it accomplishes that thing that it's sent to do. So we just anoint these prayer cloths right now with the, with, with the tangible presence of the Holy Ghost, with the tangible power to heal with the tangible power to drive out sickness and disease and physical injury. We release that anointing now to these tissues in Jesus' mighty name, and we thank you in advance, Father, for the good work that they do as they're released into the kingdom, as they're released into situations, as they're released into people's lives. And it's in Jesus' name we do this. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, I think, I think that takes care of our business today. That just means we've been very efficient. Yes, ma'am.
Yeah, yeah. Next month, uh, we're going to have Dave Herzog. He's one of our uh, long-standing friends. He's got a real uh, anointing for miracles. And uh, Dave Herzog will be uh, teaching, preaching, and releasing healing uh, in this pulpit a month from, from today, the first uh, Saturday in uh, in, in um, uh, June will be actually June 1st. So uh, he'll be here at the church Friday night, uh, May 31st. He'll be in this meeting next month. He'll be in a Saturday night meeting Sunday morning and Sunday night as well. But that's going to be a real special time. So, so be sure and keep that in mind. And I, I really think, you know, I, I believe in, in our ability to, to release this healing by proxy. I believe in our, in our ability to release it by faith. But just nothing substitutes for somebody just being here. And, and so if you know anybody with any sort of sickness or any sort of a, 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 a need to, re, to receive this kind of a, a, a this kind of a heavenly diagnosis, you be sure and bring them next month, okay? I really think, in my humble opinion, there's no substitute for, for, for live music and live anointing. Amen. Hallelujah. So uh, anyway, if you need one of these prayer cloths, just grab one. And uh, otherwise, let's uh, be released in Jesus' name to go and lay hands on the sick and they shall recover in every other situation that you might uh, happen to find yourself until we meet again. God bless you. adventure
Oh